So you've found a commercial property and you want to use the government's new permitted development rights to convert it to residential use. Stop! Don't do it until you watch this video because not all commercial properties are viable for residential conversion. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, you know that I talk a lot about converting commercial buildings to residential use. If you've attended my commercial property training program, which is the UK's number one training course for teaching uh, how you find commercial properties suitable for residential conversion, then you will know how to do this properly. But there are a lot of people who haven't been on that course who find commercial properties and immediately assume that it's suitable and viable for residential conversion. The government has introduced permitted development rights that allow enormous amount of buildings to be converted from commercial to residential use. And that is a fantastic strategy because right now, particularly with the oncoming recession, there are literally loads and loads of commercial buildings which are now becoming defunct. Uh, in other words, they don't have a commercial use for, particularly shops and offices. The thing is, just because you can convert a building from commercial to residential use, it doesn't mean you should. The government may say you can, but should you do it is all dependent on, well, whether it's economically viable fundamentally. Now I'm going to show you what I mean by means of a case study. Now many of you will know that I appear on Property Elevator, the hit Sky TV show. It's a bit like Dragon's Den, but for property investors, people come on that show to pitch their property deal to five of us angels for funding. We are now in our fifth series of the show, uh, but here is a pitch from a budding property entrepreneur who has an office um, that he wants to convert to a number of flats. Now, he's, he's pitching the deal, and what you're going to see is the pitch as it went out on the Property Elevator show, as it was aired on the uh, TV. And every now and then I'm going to interrupt the action and give you my kind of analysis and commentary. Stay tuned till the very end and I'll wrap this up in some key learning points for you when you're looking for the suitability and viability of commercial buildings to convert to residential use. Now, if you're liking this video, um, make sure you smash that like button. Tell me what you think of what we're saying in the comments below. And you're interested in finding out any more about my comprehensive eight-week commercial property training program, the links are all in the description below and on the screen. So let me now hand you over to Elizabeth Warburton, the show's presenter, who introduce you to the uh, picture and then we'll unfold the key learning points uh, of this video. How excited are you to be here today? Uh, very excited. Uh, yeah. First time in my life doing something like this. So. Okay, so stepping out the comfort zone a little bit. Yeah. Always very a positive excited. though. A little bit of nervousness, shaking, yes. Yeah, you'll be uh, fine once yeah. you get in there, don't you worry. So tell us a little bit about the deal then that you've brought today. The deal I've brought today is a deal um, which is uh, where, I'm where I'm living at the moment. In okay, Chelmsford, in so it's nice and close. Yeah. Good. Um, uh, so this deal is about 40 minutes away from my home uh, near about Colchester. Okay. Uh, it's a conversion from a uh, uh, currently occupied as an office building right. uh, by the owner themselves. Uh, so the deal is to convert them into residential from the commercial and then uh, hopefully uh, the few few different angles to it whether we can uh, convert into a few flats yeah. or do semi-detached or maybe one big, uh, one big house. mega Detached ah. property. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, excellent. Good luck. Yeah, thanks, We're going to send you in now yeah, and I you. will speak to you when you get out. Thank you. All the best. Thank you <laughs> Sorman, thank you very much for coming in today. Um, let's hear about your deal. Thanks very much, everyone. Uh, hi, um, I'm Sorman Paul. Uh, uh, I'm living in uh, Jamsford at the moment. Uh, coming up with this deal here, as you can see, it's uh, uh, near where I live, around 40 minutes away from uh, Jamsford, uh, a place called Ardley, which is near Colchester Town, around four miles away from Colchester Town. Uh, this is an existing office uh, building. Uh, I think it's Class E as the estate agent is saying, uh, occupied by the owner themselves uh, for their business, uh, but they're, they're short staff now, so they want to sell it off and move on. Um, so my plan is to uh, convert this into a residential accommodation. The whole building can be converted into residential. There doesn't need to be any commercial space lef left in here. Uh, it's three story and there's a basement down as, uh, there as well. Uh, the good thing with the basement is if you go towards the back, 
uh, the basement, the 60% of the basement is above ground. So there are potentials that you can actually put some windows or daylight uh, there to uh, make some more space in there. So that's, that's the deal in, 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 in short. I have seen the property to, uh, a few different angles. Uh, initially, my plan is to see if we can make two flats on each floor and convert into possibly to six flats. Yeah. Uh, but after doing the, after I did the viewing, uh, just two days ago, uh, the, 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 if you see the width of the building is, is not great. Uh, mm, it's very it's around, around, probably around 15, 15, 16 feet, possibly. Uh, so, so you won't, you won't probably have two flats on each floor. The most probably you can get out of it is one big flat and one mm. floor. Uh, now, there are a few different uh, pros and cons with that. This stake is running in the middle of the building. The other thing could be split the building into half and to make two semi-detached properties. Uh, there are actually two existing doors. I'm not sure whether this was a uh, semi-detached property in the past or not. There are actually two doors on either side of it. So there's one door you can see here, the similar one on the other side. So if you can make two semi-detached properties, uh, that would work as well. And the third option could be to make the whole building into a big massive detached property. What, what job, what's your, what's your full-time job? Uh, I'm a managing quantity survey in a, in a good reputable company, construction company at the Are moment. Are you? Yeah. Well, so you've got a great handle to the, on the figures anyway. That's <laughs> good. Excellent. Yeah. Right. Um, who would like to start? What Banjo. are you looking for in terms of investment? The one thing I don't have is I have ideas. I can manage the things. I don't have the money. Uh, the most I can invest in here is probably around 25000 The rest of the money, which is say 500000 of the cost of the purchase of the building, mm -hmm. uh, I guesstimate it, say around, uh, if we do two semi-liters, if it costs 100000 each, I, I'm actually looking for almost all of it. Uh, well, that's absolutely fine, because yeah. that's what we're here for. That's what we're here yeah. for. So, Ranjan? The proposal then. I mean, um, you've looked at semi-detached, you looked at detached. I, I mean, I'm not convinced the future of this building is as houses because in that market, whether people want the front door straight on the pavement with no okay. um, yeah. garden or, or anything like that, yeah. I'm not, I'm yeah, not yeah. convinced. Yeah. If that being said, um, you've looked at it as a flat scheme, yeah. have you? What do you... S there are some buildings with... Op I mean, you can convert Class E buildings yeah. into from offices into residential use under PD. But with some buildings, the floor plate is just such mm. that it's a bit too difficult to make work. Yeah. What configuration have you looked at if, it's, if the end game is flats? We, we can benefit massively for, from two flats on each floor if we can extend the building uh, in, the, in the back. Yeah. That will give a massive advantage because you will have nice, decent one or two possibly one nice, uh, decent size, one bedroom flat, or maybe you can squeeze two bedrooms if, if it's possible, depends on what we plan in the extension. In the current stage, it seems a bit too tight because you see, as I said, it's a 15, 16 foot wide, thick, uh, deep, deep. Now, you'll be struggling to configure two rooms, kitchens, bathroom in that space. It'll be very, maybe a studio will be, will be you can put it um, to a studio in there. But then again, uh, I don't, I'm not sure that the uh, uh, the uh, demand for studio or those kind of flats is uh, there in yeah. that To be place. honest with you, that's one of the problems I see with this building, because to extend it, it's not PD. That's full no, planning, planning permission. that take yeah. A, yeah. A, a long, long time. Yeah. And what I like to do is look at, well, if you buy the building, what can you actually slam dunk with PD in the minimum yeah. time and use that as the baseline? And um, with the existing configuration, I'm not sure whether you'll get a flat layout that would be optimum. The mm. other thing I'm wondering is with the basement. Yeah. The basement has no natural light. So it's Currently don't have any full planning light. Yeah. to get any light in there. Yeah. So if you consider the floor space yeah. uh, just above ground floor, you're in at roughly about £200 a square foot in terms of purchase. Purchase, yeah. And if you're talking about you know, at least £100 a square foot to build, and 300 pound a square foot end value, mm. yeah. then there might not be much in it. 
just on PD alone. Yeah. Yeah, You're fully not. hingent on getting planning, planning permission. permission to do something to develop this site. The other way is... Do you is think I'm right on that? Or Okay, it's quite a bit to unpick there. I think when you're looking at a commercial building, um, you've got to go with the flow of the building and you've also got to go with the market demand in the locality that building is in, in terms of what you want to convert it to. So um, there was a little bit of discussion there about uh, should it be two semi-detached houses or should it be multiple flats? So that's all fine. Um, where this deal starts to get muddled is when you start mixing um, hope value with what you can actually do. Permitted development is a set of rules enshrined by central government which give you a tick list of criteria that if your building meets all these criteria, you have the right to convert it to residential use, to convert it to multiple flats, and no one can say no. Planning permission is hope. You know, you may get it, you may not get it. It might take eight weeks, it might take a year, you might have to spend years through appeal. Permitted development is something which, as a developer, you can do with certainty, with planning permission. It is uncertain. So when you're evaluating a commercial conversion deal, and you're, it's only viable if you do a little bit of work under permitted development, which is certainty, plus you have to do some work under planning permission, which is uncertainty, then basically the whole deal, the whole proposition is uncertain. If you look at this building from the outside, you can see it's got a central staircase uh, which goes all the way up the building and it would be very nice to have uh, flats on either side of the central staircase on each floor. So you'd get six flats. The building's too narrow for that. It will only work with minimum space standards if you extend it at the back. That's where planning permission comes in and this really torpedoes the whole deal. My advice for people, particularly at this stage of the property market and the property market cycle, is to only look for commercial conversion projects which are profitable just under permitted development alone. Anything that you can do under planning permission is great icing on the cake, but assess the deal's viability based on permitted development alone because then you've got certainty to proceed and offer on the project and you can also be quick in and out within a year. And that's what's essential, particularly in current market conditions. I, I understand what idea. you're saying. Yeah, that's what I thought uh, as well. Uh, the, the other thing is we can build uh, one big flat in one floor. We can, again, if we have to shift the stake, as in all, all mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm not sure whether that needs planning permission or not. No. Possibly. No, it wouldn't. What, yeah. what, what would those three flats sell for if you have one per floor? Uh, that's that's the another chance. If if one f one two bedroom flats, uh, uh, as talking to the agents, probably around one eighty two hundred, uh, which is not doesn't, profitable. Doesn't, it doesn't it does, doesn't stuck, work. Yeah. So that doesn't work. Sure. Will, will not be profitable. Yeah. What is the juice in this deal? Because uh, the way I'm trying to cut it, every which way, I'm not seeing much. If I'm entirely honest. But well, even the best option makes a hundred grand, yeah. which is exactly. that's yeah. before, in, that's like before interest. Fifteen percent. It's going to be which less than twelve and a half percent. Isn't it? I, I just think you know it, the guys say it a lot. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you should do it, and that's one of them for me. So I, I just. Yeah, it's not for me. What sort of business is in there at the moment? Uh, I think they're running a recruitment business there. Uh, I think the, the other thing is, the, one of the reasons why agents price this sort of building in this sort of way is that um, they're kind of hoping that some an owner-occupier business will pick this up. Mm. Because if an owner-occupier business and the directors of them buy it in their pension, yeah. it will make it attractive to, to have that with a bit of car parking and run their business out of it. Yeah. So it may be that this building is priced not expecting someone to come along and develop it, mm -hmm. but to occupy it as that sort of business. That's just a view because of the price point of it. Yeah. I think it's too expensive to develop. When you look at a commercial building, what you've got to do is look at what is the most profitable outcome, profitable use of that building. You can't just go in with, I want to do commercial to residential conversions and look at every commercial building with that as the end outcome. There are many buildings that we look at where the most optimum use of that building is, it remains to be commercial, but it might be not the same commercial use as was used previously. And there are other buildings where the most optimum use is total conversion to residential. 
And there are other buildings where it makes sense to maintain, say, the ground floor as commercial and to convert the upper floors into residential. But each building in each location will have a different optimum mix of uses depending on what's right in that scenario. So let me declare my interest. Okay, I made an offer for this building back in 2007. And by memory, and I'm pretty good at my memory on when it comes to money and when it comes to property, I think we, we offered 250,000 for this. Oh. Now, at the time, that was 2007, which was the height of the property market. Okay, so although you, you've got this um, mathematical calculation that's been done. Uh, Extrapolation. Yes. <laughs> I don't even understand what that means, Helen, but you, you'll be able to explain that to everyone. But Basically, I think that's probably pretty false. And we were looking to do somehow six flats in it with an extent, small extension at the back at the time. This is before PD, of course. Um, but the bit you're missing, I think, with all due respect, is the car park is a very good size. Yeah. It's a good size. Yeah. And I would have thought you could get a pair of semis on that car park. Now, one thing that in my mind, two things in my mind um, are this. One... There's a railway line quite close by. The 11 crossing. Which is never great. Two, the building is right on the road, although it's not unattractive. Mm. And, and we do a lot of vertical splits. So everyone gets obsessed with uh, flats, flats, flats. But sometimes if you split it vertically uh, and you've got entrance either side of this, yeah. then actually it's a cheaper, it's a cheaper conversion uh, and much easier to sell sometimes. So that's one option. But the price is too much at the moment. Unless, unless we did a, a pre-application, which is always a good thing to do, and see whether we can get some, some Semi dust in semis, yeah. two semis in the car park. The other issue you need to check is, is it in a flood zone? Because my memory tells me there's a nice big um, park behind it, um, but my memory tells me it might be in a flood zone. So let me tell you where I am, and that is that it's too much, it's too much for, for me to invest in at the moment, um, but I would suggest you go away, do some more research on it, uh, and then potentially, you know, we might be able to do something at a later date with it. So thank you for bringing it today, but um, similar to Helen, uh, as it stands, it, it isn't one I could invest in today. So the first thing that impresses me, of course, is John's memory. I mean, he actually recalls something in such detail which he put in a bid for way back in 2007. Uh, but there are some serious points raised which are worth um, iterating. Now, when you look at commercial conversions, it is true that the natural tendency is for flats, but vertical conversions uh, often achieve more if the building type is correct, is right, is suitable for it. And the reason they achieve more is because when you actually do a vertical conversion, you're actually going down to the ground. And when, when your building actually touches the ground, then you can sell it as a freehold building. Um, and freeholds are generally worth a little bit more than leasehold flats. You don't have service charges, ground rents, and all those sort of issues. And that's why those are attractive. But I tend to find that where your front door is directly on the pavement, they're, they're not really as popular. Uh, it, so if you've got a building which is suitable for vertical conversion and you've got a little bit of gap between the highway and the uh, front door, then those are the ones which um, it can make a lot of sense. The other point that John is alluding to in his summarization is uh, pre-app and conditionality. What he's saying is when he looked at it, there wasn't PD. Permitted development rules came in in 2013 and significantly revised in 2021 in terms of broadening their scope. But back in those days, the whole scheme would have involved planning permission without PD. That means you'd have to submit one planning application which covers the extension and the conversion into six flats. And he mentioned a pre app Now, if you're doing that sort of scheme today, the key thing is conditionality. You can't just offer to buy on a property if you don't have the certainty that you'll be able to execute your plans. So my advice is that you would do this um, subject to, so if you exchange contracts, it would be subject to getting planning permission or you secure the site with an option agreement, but you would not entertain a project where there's so much uncertainty without having some conditionality into the, in the deal. And co by conditionality, I mean, if you get the planning permission, you buy it. If you don't, you don't. Thank you.
Thank you. I'll be quick and pain free. It's definitely not one for me. You know, I like to sit here and sort of get excited as the pitch goes on. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then find my own loopholes and things you might have missed, and, and that will add value is again. And, and I think, right, yeah, that would be a great team to go and build this out. But you've explored every option on this. You, you, you've come here, you don't really know what you want to do with it anyway. And, and I don't think that's through lack of experience. I think it's because there isn't a, an mm -hmm. obvious way of developing yeah. this that makes lots of money. Um, so for me, it's not one at all. And, um, but I wish you well uh, in your journey. I, I, I recommend this site. Yeah. It's probably not for you, though. Thank you. Paul? Yeah, I th yeah, just to echo some of the stuff that's already been said, you know, just because it's there doesn't necessarily mean it should be converted to residential. Um, I don't think, I agree with Ranja, I don't think it's priced for a conversion to residential. So best case scenario, it breaks even, which means it's not worth doing. Thank you. Thank you very much for yeah. coming today and uh, good luck in your property journey. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. When you made your offer last, I was sitting there with bated breath, expecting you Wondering to pull Wondering how I'm going to pull something out of that one. Yeah. <laughs> I was and then really you disappointed me. There's no way. There's just no chance on that one. There is, no, there is literally. I mean I, I mean, I remember, obviously, I, I know it's just come back on the market as well. And um, the only trick to this deal is whether you can get planning in the car yeah. park. Yeah. planning, yeah. isn't it? And that the one thing he'd, he didn't even suggest was that. So that's a pitch as it went out on Property Elevator, which appears on Sky TV. So what are the key learning points from that? Well, you can convert a hell of a lot of commercial buildings into residential use. It doesn't mean they're all financially viable to do so. Some buildings are best kept in their commercial state. Some buildings you can only make a viable scheme if you also do things not just under permitted development, but under planning permission. Um, such as, in this case, doing an extension or even building a couple of houses in the car park. But permitted development is certainty, and you can be in and out of a deal in under a year. If you add to that planning permission, then that deal can take you two, three years to actually uh, come out of. In today's market, speed is absolutely key. You want certainty. Certainty means less risk. And when you undertake a project which is wholly permitted development, that means that um, you're working with the, within the existing fabric of the building. You've got the walls and the windows, the roofs, they're already up. And it's just internal configuration, which means that the project is quick to develop, which means you can be in and out in a year. Now, if you want to learn more about how you can profit from commercial property, be it commercial property buy to let, commercial property investing through a pension, and of course, commercial conversions under the new permitted development rights, then what you have to do is educate yourself. I run the UK's leading commercial property training course. It's an eight-week comprehensive program. You can join me on that and find out full details at our website, and the details are in the description below. That's it for now. See you guys in the next video. High streets across the land are changing forever. Basically, there's an oversupply of retail premises. Shops are closing down, more are going to close down in the future. The government know this, and that's why they've introduced, or they're introducing a light touch planning system, which allows small developers to easily repurpose these buildings to residential use under a light touch planning regime called permitted development. Now, this is going to be the biggest revolution uh, and the biggest change and the biggest opportunity for property investors um, that I've ever seen and this is all coming into effect on 1st of August so you need to know what's happening and what properties to look for to take advantage of these opportunities so that you can get in there and take that first mover advantage. I've got a 90 minute free masterclass to get you ready for August the 1st. Make sure you join me, click the link below. Whether you're a beginner or expert, we'll get you started.